And that's also one of the beauties of Cardano in general, this determinism. I mean, on Ethereum, you never know if you submit a transaction whether it will fail or not. And you can lose money, gas, if it fails. On Cardano, that can never happen. What is going on, Cardano community? Welcome to the Cardano Summit taking place in Dubai. My name is Fareed. To my left, I've got Dikemba, as well as Dr. Lars Brunez representing the Genius Yield team. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. So am I. Thank you very much for having us. Not a problem. We're well, going to go ahead and just jump right on in. I cover Genius Yield on my channel quite frequently, but I want to jump into the Genius Yield testnet. The Genius Yield Alpha testnet just dropped. Do you guys maybe mind talking about what the community's reaction has been and what we can potentially expect for the near future? Yeah, so the testnet has been, a while, been up for a while, uh, maybe close to three or four weeks. Uh, we've gotten a lot of good feedback on different things of how the UI should work, um, how fast things should, should be done. And so we've made a whole lot of edits into making that process more better, making the website more user friendly, and even got some updates even with the smart contract uh, just underneath. And so uh, we're hoping um, pretty soon, hopefully before the end of the year, we are finished and we can get things to, get things to the people. Anything to add, Lars? No, thank you, Dikemba. That was basically the gist of it. It's just, I mean, ideal what you expect from it or hope for from a testnet that people are actually using it and give you valuable feedback. And of course, it was also nice to see that there was no catastrophe. So, I mean, no money was stolen, anything like that. So everything's safe. So the th things we were changing now were like to make it nicer and increase usability. But I mean, the foundations are rock solid and I hope the testnet also proved that that's really good news to hear, at least for the initial phase of the testnet. Now, do you guys mind touching on what we can potentially expect in terms of future updates now that you guys have the baseline? In the future, after we launch this testnet, you know, we'll have things like market orders, limit orders, time limit orders, which is something new that's going to be in the V1. But in the future, we definitely plan to add other advanced order types. We've already talked about options a lot, and so that's something we've done some preliminary work on, and so that's going to get more into full drive after the V1. And so we're just going to continue adding more advanced order types that's possible with, uh, with the UTXO model that Cardano has and adding more utility. Yes, exactly. And also probably on the liquidity provider side, um, I mean, we have had the smart contracts for liquidity providers ready for a long time. But of course, the smart contract is only a small part of everything. You need the infrastructure. So that's also one thing that, that we can consider. And it, of course, we also listen to the community and see which features are more uh, desired and then react accordingly. But yeah, we have a lot of ideas what we can do. And I mean, I talked about our options contract yesterday in the masterclass. So that is in principle ready and probably relatively easy to integrate into the UI. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Got it. Now, I do have a question. I want to switch topics here and talk about the SORs. A lot of the AMM style DEXs on Cardano right now use batchers. Do you guys mind explaining what an SOR is and what the advantages of using SORs as a part of Genius Yield's strategy um, provides as opposed to, again, the batchers that we have? So I think the reason most of our competitors use batchers is because most of them use this AMA style um, platform. Um, where basically there is like very few UTXOs that each transaction needs to use. So there's this bottleneck and that's only efficient if you have some process that batches a lot of trades together and can handle them in one transaction. And we went another way and we try to make full use of the Cardano UTXO model. So each single order is its own UTXO. It's completely parallelizable and decentralized. And therefore, we don't have this need for the central control of, of transaction flow or trades. And so we, but of course, you need somebody that matches orders together, so that two or more. And I mean, we don't want to make that permissioned or use, uh, require licenses because we feel it's, it's much better for everyone um, if everybody can do these, uh, what we call SOR, smart order routers. So it's basically just some entity, a bot, that, that looks for suitable orders on, in our order book and, and matches them together. And that's completely permissionless, so you don't need a license from us, nothing. Everybody can do that. And I think, I mean, apart from 
I think it goes with the spirit of Cardano and decentralization. I think it's also like good from a financial or efficiency point of view because um, it's not so trivial to, to match these orders. I mean, you can't just, if everybody goes for the like two most attractive ones, then there's a lot of contention for those. And, and again, you have congestion. So the trick is to get like diverse strategies where people do interesting things, maybe not only two, but three orders or trade off like the arbitrage they get for maybe more exotic orders that others are not going for. And by this game theoretic setup that everybody wants to match orders to, to make some money, get, get the arbitrage, I think there will be a natural equilibrium that if there's like orders that get ignored by, by the existing SOS, then somebody will jump into that gap because he can make some money there. And that's of course good for them, um, both like financially hopefully, but definitely intellectually because it's a fun problem to to find uh, suitable orders and strategies, but of course also and most importantly for our users because their orders will be matched like quicker and faster. So I'm very excited about that. I mean, it's never been tried in that way, but I'm very optimistic that it will work and very excited that we do this like this. So. Yeah, really great points about Dr. Lars. Uh, the only thing I would add about too with our, with our bots, with the SORs is that, you know, with batchers, when they're batching these orders, how they prioritize them and how they put them together before they uh, execute it to the blockchain has been a point of contention, you know, and it's centralized. With the SROs, it's completely decentralized. So you can run a, you can run your own SRO bot, anybody can. So it's something that we, we don't control at all and uh, people, we, people will be able to, to, to uh, do it themselves. And so that's one thing that's really different about ours. That's going to take me to my next question. Given the fact that you guys are on the test net right now, are there SORs running? And if so, who's actually running them right now? So we are definitely running some SORs ourselves, and I think we definitely have a, a few partners as well, uh, other communities, uh, other projects that are running theirs as well. But I mean, we, in order to help people write these SORs, we open source some basic code to interact with our orders because people should put their energy into coming up with good strategies and not the mechanics of matching orders. And of course, we also have like a simple strategy so people can just take it and run it. And I do know that we got feedback from people that actually tried that on the testnet. So we also like gave some tips to them how to like run them more efficiently and so on. So people have definitely tried it. And I think during the last two days talking to people, I've heard several times that somebody said, oh, I'm going to to run an SOR on your, on your decks. And so I, I think people are aware of it and, and eager to try it and do it. Yeah, that's really cool to hear. And it'll be interesting to see how that evolves and matures as the protocol grows and as more people begin to run SORs and begin to have their own set of best practices. Now, as we get ready to close this quick interview out, I want to pose a question to the both of you just about challenges that you guys have faced along the way um, getting this testnet up and running and out to the community. You know, what has been some of the hurdles you guys have faced and how have you guys been able to overcome those things? I mean, first of all, the infrastructure is always tricky to, to just handle so many requests. And um, I mean, you must keep up to date with the blockchain and you must make them sure that if something goes wrong, if, if your database server crashes, that you don't lose any data, that it's always recoverable. So we, for example, try very hard that the worst that can happen is that we need some time to basically rewind and, and replay the blockchain, but that every essential data is actually on the blockchain. So I mean, of, I mean, we do use database for efficiency, for the UI, but there's nothing that's only on the database. Everything comes originally from the blockchain. So, so if something bad happens to our database, we can just basically start some weeks ago and, and replay everything into the database. But of course it's, it's difficult to, to get that right and there's lots of moving parts, uh, lots of, of different services that have to work perfectly together. Another thing is like to get the incentives right, like the fee structure, because obviously we need to live, so we need some income, but obviously also want to set the right incentives. For example, it's essential, especially for an order book, that there is liquidity, so we don't want to punish people for not doing market orders, but instead like providing liquidity. With, but then you must um, somehow set the fees in a way that that works, and we also want to incentivize these SORs so that like taker fees mustn't be so high that it doesn't isn't lucrative anymore to run an SOR. And that's also one of these smart contract changes we did recently to actually put our fees into our smart contracts themselves. 
because there's also now this new um, trend, which in principle I think it's a very good one, these DEX aggregators that use different DEXs. I think it's beautiful because, I mean, we're all one Cardano community and it's good to pool all the liquidity from different DEXs together. But of course it poses the challenge, how do we make money if people just circumvent our UI and, and go for our orders directly, especially because we are so open and transparent and every, we don't have these licenses, so everybody can match our orders. So obviously, but still we obviously need a cut. So that's why we put like the fees directly into the smart contracts. So, so now everybody happily can match our orders, but they still have to pay us a bit. So yeah, those are challenges I can think of. Yeah, most definitely. And like you said, when uh, a change happens in the smart contract, it's not something you just update one day and then the next day it's there. I mean, you have the back end, your front end, a lot of things have to change. There's a lot of moving parts when these updates happen. And at the same time you're developing and you have changes those can cause delays, but also when new things happen in the, uh, the crypto world, just as, as he talked about desk aggregators, those cause changes too. So you have to be able to develop, hopefully at a good pace, while also being aware of changes that are happening and being, being able to adapt. And so I, you know, that, I know that's a challenge for us, it's a challenge for, probably for every project that, that uh, is trying to deliver something. And so, uh, yeah, we've been working on that, getting our processes more streamlined, and, and just working together on a more efficient basis. Yeah, from what I've seen so far, the app looks great. Now, I believe right now it's only open to OGs who have um, your ISPO NFTs. When could we potentially expect for the greater Cardano community to get access to the actual application or to the test net? So, um, I think it would be hopefully soon. Like I said, we are planning to hopefully get things wrapped up uh, in a near term time basis. We've made a lot of updates to this to this OG uh, test net and uh, eventually we're gonna get to a good spot where we're gonna uh, put this public. And so that's definitely our goal. We're not waiting. Uh, we're doing things as, a, as in a fast and an efficient uh, process as we can. And once we get there, it'll definitely be public soon. Cool. Any glass closing thoughts from either one of you? Uh, yeah, definitely glad glad to be on your platform. I uh, definitely enjoy watching all your shows. Thank you. um, definitely like your coverage of the of the Cardano community and also the Genius Shield decks. And uh, everybody, everybody's look out for our decks. I mean, I think we're bringing something extra, uh, just as time limit orders. Uh, the, the, the way orders are actually matched and executed is something that's totally decentralized. And so these are some unique features about our our decks that's, uh, that will add value to the system. and more openness and more transparency. So definitely look look out for us, follow us, and, and we'll continue bringing you more utility. Yeah, I just want to thank people for their patience. I mean, it, it has been a while, but I believe, I mean, this is also what IOG does and has been criticized for a lot that, like Shelley, was late. But I still think it was the right way. I mean, this um, move fast and break things that, I mean, in Web2, I mean, people say for, for like standard apps, I think that definitely doesn't fly in the blockchain world. I mean, you have to, I mean, it's about millions or potentially billions of dollars worth of money. So you really have to be careful. And I mean, I know it's painful to wait, but I, I'm sure it was worth it. And I'm, yeah. And as I said before, I mean, these SORs are very close to my heart. So I really hope that people um, enjoy writing them and running them. And I invite everyone to, to try. I personally have always dreamt of being able to do something like that, basically make money, a bit of money, by just being smart with, with zero risk. And I mean, that's what SOR is. I mean, you, you can't lose money. I mean, you only have to, and that's also one of the beauties of Cardano in general, this determinism. I mean, on Ethereum, you never know if you submit a transaction, whether it will fail or not. And you can lose money, gas if it fails. On Cardano, that can never happen. If you if you don't do something very stupid, but I mean, if you use the normal standard Cardano node, it can, can't happen. So this is super. I mean, totally risk-free. I mean, you try to make a match. If it goes through, then you make some money. If not, then you lose zero money, nothing. I mean, all you need is like access to a node. But even that is freely available, if depending on which provider you use. So <clears throat> I think it's a beautiful like intellectual challenge for people that enjoy programming or finance or trading strategies. And I hope that a lot of people will try it. 
Yeah, no, wonderfully said. Um, I want to thank the both of you, Dikemba, Dr. Lars, representing the Genius Yield team. For anybody who hasn't checked out their decks already, I'll leave the link to their official website down below. If you guys are not a part of their OG um, group, definitely make sure to go ahead and pick up one of their NFTs. I'll leave the link to that as well, which is available on jpeg.store. If you guys enjoyed today's chat, make sure to hit that thumbs up. If you guys have any questions for Dikemba or Dr. Lars, leave them down in the comment section below. And on that note, we'll see you guys in the next video.